What's going on guys? Welcome to your 21st Java tutorial. More like a review. Uh, we're going to finish up our little application again. Uh, right here, we want to have five numbers, random, 1 through 10, or 1 through 100, and if those numbers are divisible by 2, uh, with no remainder, then, uh, you know, you win. And before we, uh, you know, just polish this off with some of the skills that we've learned, and seeing how to put those skills in action, I uh, wanted to teach you guys one quick method that we're going to use working with arrays. So we're just going to do a system printout, not printing out from our for loop, it's just not going to do anything really here. What we can do is we can use some methods on array type variables. And there's a built in method that I want to show you guys for array type variables. And again we created an array type variable called num, it's an integer array here as you can tell. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a system printout of our num variable. Again, this is an array, and we can use a method called length. So if you hit dot, you can scroll through some of the methods that we can use on this type of a variable. And over here, you can see that if it's an int array type of variable, we can use this method called length. So we're just going to click length, length and see what that does. So when we save this, run it, it prints out 100. So now what does this 100 mean? Well, when we set up our array, we set it up to have 100 positions, again positions 0 through 99, that's 100 different positions, and using this method right here tells us how many positions are in our array, so there's 100. So if we change our initial setup to be 50, save it, run it, again it's going to get the length of how many positions are within our array, and it's going to return 50. So that's kind of a useful a little method that we're going to be using for this activity just to show you guys some uh, you know standard programming if you guys see any examples with arrays and for loops uh, you might see this as well so let's delete that because we don't need it now let's set up our program again it has five positions or five different integer values again um, and we're going to want to give each one of those positions a random number 1 through 100. Right now when we set up an integer array like we did here, it by default sets each position value equal to 0. As you can see over here, it's pretty much the same as it is right here. Now what we want to do is we want to change each one of those to be a random number, 1 through 100 again, and we set up this random type variable up top so that's what we're going to be using and what we're going to do is we're going to cycle through our array our integer array within our for loop so now what we can do is we can say 0 through 5 if we want um, which is going to work fine position 0 1 2 3 4 as well again that's five positions and uh, so we're golden but just to use that method, and what you guys will see a lot when you're looking at other people's code, is they'll do, they'll refer to the array that they're cycling through, and then they're going to use that method length. So again, this is still going to return a value of five, but it's better, it's better programming. So if later they, they're like, oh crap, I didn't want five values in my array, I wanted six, it's automatically going to you know update this as well because it's referring to how many positions are in our array so you guys want to probably do that or get used to doing that I should say um, because it might save you time in the future instead of changing this and looking through your code seeing where your for loop was where you set up your array uh, you know whatever but now what we can do is we can refer to our array um, again what position we want such as zero and we can set this equal to r dot next next int here and we want to give it a value of one through hundred so we're going to say hundred values plus one so it starts at one and ends at a hundred so we could do that again five times I'm just going to cut this here um, you know paste 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 setting up each one of our positions in our array as such you know again we have five different numbers we're working with so we could set up something like this and it's going to establish a new random number for each one of these positions within our array but you know 
to save us some time, what we're going to do is we're just going to set up our num here within our for loop, and we're going to set this position to be i. We're going to set that equal to be r dot next int 100 and plus 1 here. So as you can see, already we saved ourselves five lines of code, or four lines of code, because again we established our i position to be 0, so that's going to refer to our first position within our array, again right here if you guys want to think of it like that, and it's going to set it equal to a next uh, a random integer 1 through 100, then it's going to add 1 to our i value, check if the i value is less than you know 5 at the moment, and it is, and then i is going to be equal to 1 now, so it's going to change our to our first position in our array, and give that position a random number as well. So already we can just delete all these lines of code up there and our for loop will handle setting up all those positions. And just to show you guys, I'm just going to paste this line of code I copied earlier. We're now we're going to print out that current position in our array within a new line of, you know, system printout. So now we just save this, run it, and as you can see we get uh, five random numbers all through 1 through 100 and there we go. And that's actually probably going to be it for this tutorial because it's probably going to take a little bit longer. I want to talk about a new concept, somewhat new concept in the next tutorial. But we'll finish it in the next tutorial and we'll get on to something new and exciting. So thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you then. Have a good one.